stupid video. Let's uh, figure out how to make that stuff. I'm going to show you right here the finished product. This is before and after. So that's before and after. So this is pretty much what we're going to make. You notice the depth of field is really screwed up. You notice these people stop looking like people and more like tiny toys. Hence why this is called the tiny toy or tiny town effect. And generally this is considered a way of faking tilt shift photography. If you're not familiar with tilt shift photography, why don't you Google it or check out Wikipedia? Essentially, it's. Remember back when cameras had a big accordion between the body and the lens and you could kind of wiggle them around? Well, that's basically what you're faking here. People do it to appear artistic or smart. So now you can fake that too in post. I've been faking being artistic and smart for a really long time. So the first thing you want to do is go film something. I filmed this off of my balcony because I have a really ostentatious apartment and I can see really far over the city and sometimes I sit up there drinking my cognacs and smoking my cigars and feeling way better than everyone else around me. I can see fireworks several times a year. So, what you're going to do is you've gone outside into the terrible cold, you've stood on top of a building, you've filmed some stuff. Now let's go ahead and bring that into a composition. Let's just work off this bus example. New comp. So you take your footage, drag it onto the new comp. And we're not really going to affect this clean plate very much. Except we're going to go layer, time, and you can use time remapping if you want. I'm just going to use the time stretch. And the stretch factor, right now it's at 100%. If I went to 110%, that would make it stretch it longer, and it would make it slower. But we're going to go down to 10%, meaning we're compressing it and making its new duration a lot less. Okay. Go to the end here. Hit N to move your uh, work area and trim the comp to the work area, just so we're not working with a lot of stuff we'll never use. Now everything we change is going to be on a new adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, we will put one lens blur. Now all of these settings are pretty useless for now until we create a depth map to make it worth our while. Uh, for now, just put on repeat edge pixels and feel a little bit better about yourself because you accomplished something. So, new, go new, shape layer, and then make a rectangle, or my favorite way of being uh, cheap and fast, <laughs> my favorite types of women, cheap and fast, double click on this rectangle up here, and it will create a shape layer rectangle. Mine looks kind of silly, but uh, what you're going to do is go up to the fill here, make sure that, make sure it's on linear gradient, right there. Click OK. And now we're going to edit the gradient we want and make sure, usually by default it comes on looking like, looks like this. So what you're going to do is take the black part here, make sure it's selected. You can see it's selected because it has a little orange thing around it. Change its location to 50. Add a new point. Make sure its location is 100 make its color totally white, and hit OK. Now you'll see, oh, my gradient looks pretty stupid because it only takes up this much, but bear with me here. Twirl into here, twirl into here. Change the start point of the gradient to be 0, 540, and the end point to be 0, negative 540. So now we have what you would consider to be a reflected gradient. You got black in the middle, you got white on either end. Kind of like an inverted Oreo cookie. You could make it like a regular Oreo cookie if you want. I'm, I'm not here to tell you what to do. Now also apply to this, this shape layer, 
a curves adjustment, which we'll use to just control this a little bit. Because what it's going to do is we're going to use this gradient to define what areas of the image are in focus. So all the areas that are black, we're going to make those the focused areas, and all the areas that are white, we're going to make those the unfocused areas. So poke its eye out. We don't want to look at it anymore. Click on the adjustment layer. Here where it says depth map, go where it says none, change that to be shape layer one, or whatever you've named your thing to be. Now you can see this part is now less blurry than this part. The depth map is looking at the luminance of this layer, luminance being from black to white, and saying, okay, according to the focal distance, which is zero, so anything that's at zero luminance, I will make in focus, and anything that's the opposite of that, which is 255, or pure white, according to the luminance, is going to be blurry. How blurry is it? It's going to be blurry depending on a camera that has these settings. And we would like its iris radius to be something like 25. The higher the iris radius, or the size of the iris, the more blurry it will get, or the more exaggerated the depth of field will be. If you set this to zero, it goes away. If you set this up to 50, it gets really intense. So I think 25 is a good healthy medium. And that's essentially it. You've created the tiny toy fake tilt shift. So if we want to screw around with this thing, then we have to do it all within these two layers that are going to control how this bottom layer looks. So let's say, you know, well, I don't want that kind of a depth map. I want something else, you know, I want to, I don't know. I want it to be, you know, a bit more harshly defined, you know, and you screw around with this curves adjustment or something. or And then the other things to do are, you know, give this a curves adjustment, you know. Anyway, something like that, something artistic, you know, you do, you do it yourself. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you what looks good. Um... You know, when in doubt, just apply uh, curves and tint to something and adjust it until people think you're artistic. Uh, that's what I do. Anyway, just like I fake, you know, being a good photographer in post, I often fake being a deep and interesting person. It's harder to do in post, but I try as best I can. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. If you have any questions about the lens blur or questions about this tiny toy effect or questions about why I keep coughing a lot I've asked my doctor that hit me up in the comments or hit me on the Twitter at EC Abrams check out EvanAbrams.com where you can do all sorts of things like leave other comments I guess or send me rude emails I don't know anyway I'll uh, see you around the internet. If you need help, let me know. And, uh, yeah, have a good one. I'd love to see what you guys make with this. Hopefully it's better than what I made, because my stuff is total crap. And, uh, yeah, have a good one.